Hi everybody, I'm Rick Hansen and welcome to the Foundations of Wellbeing. And we have here today the opportunity to uh, listen to uh, and interact with Dr. Dan Siegel, a friend of mine, a legendary teacher, someone who has, um, I think, arguably made more contributions, or at least he's tied for first place in the last 20 years than anyone in the field of, uh, in the Western world in terms of psychology, parenting, and related fields like coaching, human resources training, uh, mindfulness training, etc. I think a lot of people, um, I can relate to this myself, when they're, you know, eight, six, 15, they have a vision for a kind of life they want to have in terms of the sense of aliveness in it, uh, fun, adventure. And often there's a there's an ambition that they want to have, they want to play in a big game. You know, they want to perform for a lot of people. Let's say they want to write a book that some that people read. You know, they want to have clout in a certain profession. And then life unfolds and one series of choices after another in teens and then especially early 20s and then later 20s, zig, zig, zag, they end up kind of spun out over here in a backwater, as it were, rather than down the main stream of that life they wanted to have for themselves. And then there they are, 30, 40, 50. Um, this life over here has gotten increasingly concretized. Nothing wrong with that. They're not harming other people, but it feels divergent from that dream they had for their life. Maybe they dreamt, as it were, or were interested in a life that was due north, and the life they have now is east, or maybe it's northeast, but it's not mm -hmm. due north. And so a key part of reclaiming their own life in a lot of ways, uh, I think for many people, particularly in middle age, is to tune back into and, re and in a sense recover that vision that they had when they were younger. And to do that, they've got to draw upon some of the qualities that are implicit in what I've heard you talk about mindset before, a kind of friendliness toward yourself or a compassion toward yourself, treating yourself like you matter, which is a, and treating your dreams like they matter, yeah. which is particularly important if you've internalized or been with other people, as you talk about yourself, who acted like or told you that your dreams didn't really matter or they were effeminate, let's say, in a problematic sense for a boy to want to be a dancer. Um, things like that. And you stood up against that. And uh, maybe even as an adult, you've uh, reached back and recovered, reclaimed, stood up for, been an advocate for inside your own mind, um, these dreams that you might have had as a kid. So that's the territory of what I'm asking about here. And, and I wonder maybe briefly before we go on to the next thing, if you have yeah. any further comments about this. I do. I do. Yeah. Um, you know, there are, well, there's a couple of things. I mean, one is um, in the model of the mind as this self-organizing emergent process that Mindsight invites us to say, what is the mind? Not just descriptions, but a definition. This self-organizing emergent process um, will tend toward harmony when it's li liberated to do its thing, which is to integrate stuff but it'll tend toward chaos and rigidity when not. So when you talk about a person spinning out of control or stuck in a certain place, there's all sorts of ways we may not follow through on what we initially thought, and that can be absolutely fine, but there are ways where no matter what we do, we get stuck in rigidity and life becomes stagnant or a relationship becomes stagnant, or we get filled with chaos and we have these intrusive nightmares and we feel this angst about how things should be a different way. So one starting place is to say, if there's chaos or rigidity for prolonged periods of time in your life, because we all go through that at various times in a day, but if it's prolonged, the issue in our frame is what's not integrated. So in terms of an early dream you're talking about, Rick, a lot of times I think what can happen is we start absorbing the expectations of others or we absorb the lack of our needs being met in our own structures of you might call them adaptation or defense whatever framework you like to use in terms of words they mean essentially the same thing and so you begin to filter everything in life through this frame of well of course i couldn't do that because i'm not worthy in terms of someone's filled with shame or of course i have to do this because to meet my parents view i've got to do what they said i should do either way you're, you're moving in a way that's away from an inner compass. 
these aspirations that can be born from the dreams we have. And just to address specifically your question, these in a way are the junk that get in the way of a natural integrative process. And you've probably seen it as a therapist, and I've certainly seen it as a therapist, but also in my own life, that if I can get tuned into that internal compass, if I can really listen in to these internal sensations, and I can get through the rigidity of fixed ideas, like I have to do this because this person says I should do that, or the chaos where it's disturbing me because I didn't achieve something, if I can find my way, there's often this beautiful flowering of harmony, even just in a vision of where I ought to go in terms of aspiration. And so in this program, or in certainly in my work through interpersonal neurobiology, we really want to have people tune into those early dreams. We want to have them become aware of the chaos and rigidity that could be in, imprisoning them. And we want to have them realize that life is always unfolding. You're always in an emergent process. Only junk can really make you feel stagnant or chaotic. And the beautiful thing about being a human being is you have choice. And with, uh, with awareness, you can actually use different methodologies to liberate yourself. Uh, and ultimately, I think to free yourself to those original aspirations that, of course, can be modified as you grow, but then having this set of values and dreams and, and um, qualities of living that are your guideposts. So, so the internal compass then becomes literally like a compass. It gives you a true north. Only the true north needs to be a freed compass. It can't be like someone's got a bunch of magnets over here and say, come this way, Ricky, come this way. You know, you really want to try to see get clear so you're finding the true north of your life and you know when you find people who uh, have either been imprisoned in various psychological ways that hadn't found it and discover it it's so inspiring to be 